Welcome in folks to another Fallout 76 video and in today's video we're going to be kicking off a new series of weapon spotlight videos in Fallout 76. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the almighty bloodied 25% faster fire rate, 25% less VATS AP cost, the fixer. But before we get into the video, if you can remember to click that like button so that more people in the Fallout 76 community can see this, and if you feel you're missing out on videos, consider clicking that bell notification button so that you can keep up to date whenever I post a new video. So as always folks, let's get into it! So before we get into these videos, the one thing I want to reiterate and I want to make aware to everybody when we are doing these videos or any of the weapon spotlight videos, we're going to be doing this in a custom world that I've created. So this custom world, and obviously we all know when it comes to Fallout worlds, yes, you can manipulate the likes of damage output and damage reduction. But I want to reiterate that this particular custom world that I've set up here is all for essentially legendary testing. As you can see there in the little photo at the bottom, it's legendary testing. and these are the settings that I have enabled. So the only thing I've enabled is free workbench crafting so that I can essentially test out all these legendary weapons and show you guys these particular weapons. And also as well, free building because look, it's pretty awesome to be able to build anywhere. But um, essentially this world is an exact carbon copy of what you get in the likes of your private servers or in adventure mode, basically. So there's no manipulation, nothing has been added into this. So basically everything you see here will have been done in custom worlds. So, yeah, let's do it. Let's get in and test out this bloody 2525. Let's go. Alrighty, so let's take a look at this bloodied 2525. So basically, bloody 2525 the fixer. So damage increases as health decreases, 25% faster fire rate, and also as well 25% less fats AP cost. Now, when it comes to the base damage, I have it sitting here at the likes of 162, and that's essentially because of the perk cards and the mutations that I have. Now, I will go into a bloody build sort of guide at a later stage, but a quick sort of overview on this. I have the standard sort of perk cards that you need for any sort of commando build. So master commando, commando, expert commando. Then obviously I've got tank killer on. I also have concentrated fire so I can essentially um, focus on the likes of limbs while in vats and also gain high accuracy and damage. Also as well for any bloodied build, nerd rage is a must. So this obviously well below 20% health, you gain 40% extra more, or sorry, 40 extra damage resistance and 20% damage and 15% AP regen. So definitely a must. Then obviously in agility, I've got all the standard sort of sneak and AP regen per cards and then obviously as well for any build I've reiterated this loads of times in all of my build videos adrenaline this is a must to have on because essentially you gain 10% max 60% damage for 30 seconds per kill and then obviously that refreshes after a particular duration then obviously with the luck category I've got all the sort of AP regen sort of vat crits, sort of damage increase, sort of perk cards. We've got all that enabled. Then obviously when it comes to the legendary perks, we've got follow through. So range sneak damage increases damage to target by 40% for 10 seconds. So this is completely maxed out. Now you can, you know, have this at rank two, rank three, whatever you want, but I have this maxed out because it is definitely, definitely a great card to have on if you're sort of like a VAT sneak build. Also as well, I have the standard sort of legendary strength, legendary look, intelligence, agility. We've seen this in my previous videos as well. And then I just have Master Infiltrator. That's just for unlocking, you know, terminals and all that kind of good stuff. Now, also as well, when it comes to the mutations. Now, just a quick thing. When it comes to mutations, a definite good one to have on is the likes of Adrenal Reaction. Now, Adrenal Reaction, while pretty much at lower health, um, you get an increase to your damage. And also as well, your max HP goes to minus 12. Now, that's at minus 12 because I've got class freak enabled. When you take off class freak, that will go to minus 50. I think I'm nearly sure it is. But anyway, adrenal reaction, it's definitely a must if you're essentially, you know, a bloody build. Alrighty, so let's go and take a quick look at the modifications to this weapon. So with the bloody 2525, we got the powerful automatic receiver. We also have the aligned long barrel. We have the aligned stock, the perforating magazine, a reflex sight, and also as well the suppressor. Now, quick thing, when it comes to the receiver, a lot of people like to kind of switch this up between the likes of, obviously, as you can see here, the powerful automatic receiver and the prime automatic receiver. The prime automatic receiver, you do need the likes of Ultrasight 45. To craft Ultrasight 45, you do need the likes of Cobalt Flux. And if you're new to the game and you don't have Cobalt Flux, or you don't know how to get it, or it's a little bit tricky to get it, in order to get Flux, you can get it from rewards, 
um, from the likes of Scorched Earth and also as well a Colossal Problem. Or else, if you can and if you have the ability to, you can go into a nuke zone, get the materials that you need in order to craft Cobalt Flux. I'll do a guide at a later stage on how to get the likes of that and also as well, you know, where to get the materials and all that kind of good stuff. But if that you find that's a bit tricky, with most of my fixers, I always just run the powerful automatic receiver. But definite prime automatic receiver is a good one if you're going up against the likes of a Scorch Beast or Scorched, or even for most sort of people, the likes of the Scorch Beast Queen at Scorched Earth. So definitely a good one to pop on. And also as well, I'll go into a video about how to get the fixer and what to do and how to get it and all the plans and stuff. But anyway, we also have the aligned long barrel, so a lot of people like to kind of switch this up as well. For me, I like the aligned long barrel. It gives me superior ranged, improved recoil and hip fire accuracy. Also as well, the aligned stock with that pretty much that increases or sorry, improves my recoil and hip fire accuracy. Also as well, the magazine. This is completely optional as well, but standard with any fixer, this comes with the perforating magazine. So this increases your uh, armor penetration against enemies. Um, you can switch this out for whatever you want to, but for the purpose of this video, this is the particular mod that I have enabled for this. Also as well, when it comes to the likes of the um, the sights, I have a reflex sight on, but a lot of people from time to time will actually, you know, change this up for the likes of long range scopes, night vision scopes, because this will essentially increase your range, your accuracy and all that kind of stuff when you're in vats or just even when you're roaming around the wasteland. But anyway, that's what we have on and that's what we're going to use. And for most of the videos, that's what we're going to use with our fixers. Now, please let me know in the comments if you'd like me to try out the prime receivers and any other mods. I will definitely take requests for that and I will do that at a later stage in a different video. But anyway, those are the modifications. Let's go and test this bad boy out on all the enemies that Appalachia has to offer. So let's go. Let's go test this out. Alrighty, so we are down at Solomon's Pond. This is going to be our first test subject for today and it's going to be the lovely Swan, the super mutant behemoth. So let's go and wake up Swan. See if he wakes up for us. Here we go. Let's wake him up. And he is awake. Good morning, Swan. And good night, Swan. <laughs> so there you go. The bloodied fixer making uh, quick work of Swan. And there he goes back to his slumber. So yeah, pretty much with the likes of that, as you can see, we've already increased the damage up to 167. That's essentially because of adrenaline and all the other lovely perk cards and everything we have enabled. Alrighty, so we've made work of Swan. Let's go and test this out on something a little bit different. Let's go. Alrighty, so here we go. We are down at the Sunrise Field, just south of Watoga. So there we go. So just a little bit south of there. Perfect place to come and get materials for the likes of Cranberry Relish. But as we can see here, there are some Myler Crabs, Myler Kings, and oh my god, there we go. The lovely, uh, lovely wall. Of, oh, it's gone. Oh, never mind. Okay, exclamation point bug. But anyway, um, let us go and test this out on some Mylurks and see if we can wake up the Mylurk Queen. Oh, no, she's ready awake. Oh, didn't need to uh, do anything there. Let us vats her in her legs. Um, she usually, and let's try her. Let's try her. Let's try her head. There we go. Making quick work of her and she's gone. Boom. Out of here. There we go. Another Mylurk. Another Mylurk. Where's the Mylurk King? They're usually like super tanky when it comes to uh, damage resistance. Where's this Scorch going off to? Is he having a battle with another? <laughs> Are they fighting every? They're fighting themselves. <laughs> They're fighting each other. It's a uh... <laughs> it's a fight to the death. There we go. Taking out uh, all of these lovely uh, Scorched Crabs. Scorched Crab. Hmm. Sounds delicious. Alrighty, so there we go. We've tried that out on a few Mylurks. Mylurk Kings made quick work of them. Oh, hang on a second. There he is. Hey, and we're almost on, uh, we're almost on death's doorstep there. <laughs> and there we go. Alrighty, cool. So what we'll do is now we'll go and test this out on something a little bit different. Let's go and test it out on some Scorch Beasts. Let's go. Alrighty, so here we go. We are down at Dropsite V9. Obviously, one of the prime locations for Scorched Earth. Well, the only location for Scorched Earth. But one of the prime locations that you'll probably spend a lot of time in when it comes to any nukes or when you're testing this out against any enemies. Great location to come to. So there you go. We're making quick work of those, uh, those Scorched enemies. Let's go and try out these two Scorch Beasts and see if we can get their attention real quick. There we go. There's a three star, but... We don't really care because we're in a custom world, so... And we can craft as many legendaries as we possibly can. All right, he's a little bit out of range. Where are they gone? Oh, here we go. Oh, no, he's a little bit out of range. We almost have him killed there anyway. Where's his friend? Oh, he's coming back. 
circling back around. And he is regenerating. Come on, land. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Now, good night, Scorch Beast. Thank you for playing. Now, where's his friend? Where's his friend go? His friend was around here somewhere, wasn't he? Oh, there he is. Hang on, let's go and get him. Let's go and try this out. Come on. Come down here. From your tower in the sky. All right, here we go. And he is gone. As you can see there, 487, 489, and all those lovely little damage numbers there. So there you go. Make quick work of those Scorch Beasts with this bloody 2525. Obviously, it will, you know, when it comes against the likes of the Scorch Beast Queen, you know, it'll, uh, it'll definitely do uh, a good bit of damage when it comes to that. But yeah, perfect. Let's go and test this out in something a little bit different. Let's go and test this out in some ghouls. We'll head on over to the likes of the White Springs Golf Club and we'll see exactly what they're up to. We'll go clean that there. I don't think the, uh, the White Springs Golf Club janitor has been around in a while. So, yeah, let's go and try that out. Alrighty, so here we go. The White Springs Golf Club. Obviously a good location for any sort of testing when it comes to weapons. Let's get that ghoul there. Any ghoulies in here? There we go. There's another one. Oh, oh, there we go. One shot to the head. One shot, well... Two shot, as you can see there. But uh, yeah, here we go. Another one there. And then a real quick thing, as you can see there, my bloody 2525 is increased to 193, 198. Obviously, with adrenaline kicking in there, we'll get our health back up there a little bit. But with most sort of, you know, bloody bills, you want to obviously stay at least 20% health to get Nerd Rage to really be utilized. So here we go. Take care of that. Any more? Any more in here? There we go. Oh, a glowing one. Oh, oh, I gotta reload. I hate when that happens. There we go. Making quick work of him. 809. Look at that. Let's try this. There we go. 526. There we go. Alrighty, let's go and try the ghouls upstairs. Let's go and get rid of them. Anything around here? Yeah, there you go. To be honest, this really speaks for itself. It does. You know, it's... It's a top tier sort of weapon. Probably most people have probably said this before. It's a god roll. If you get a bloody 25-25, you know, you're, you're, the, the game is pretty much telling you you need to be a bloody build. <laughs> Even if you're a high health build, you know, you're a power armor build. If you roll a bloody 25-25, the game, the universe, everything is telling you you need to be a bloody build. So there we go. All right, making quick work of them. Making quick work of them. Oh, oh, hang on a second here. Oh, no. Oh, oh something hit me from behind. <laughs> but there we go. That pretty much speaks for itself. So, all right, what we're going to do is let's see if there's any more people that we can uh, test this out against. Oh, yes, a prime location for any sort of uh, spotlight video. Let's go over to West Tech and uh, try out this on uh, some super muties and see how they're getting on today. Or as some people like to call it, West Test. So let's do it. Let's go to West Tech. Alrighty, so here we are at West Tech, or as I said, a lot of people like to call this West Test for a particular reason, because a lot of people like to come here and test out their weapons. Now, on the outside of West Tech, usually Super Mutants are going to scale, you know, to whatever is in the world, so level 75, sometimes 60, but for the purpose of West Tech, I like to kind of go in the interior, because they'll start to scale to your level. So obviously, as you can see there, my level is 848, but obviously the cap for any sort of character is level 50. doesn't matter. After level 50, it doesn't really matter. Your max level for this particular game is level 50. But for the interiors, it'll start to scale to the likes of level 100. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go inside and we're going to test this out on hopefully some level 100 super mutants. And obviously at the time recording this video, all my lovely screenshots and my wallpapers and stuff like that for my loading screens are still not loading. Who knows? Hopefully someday uh, it'll get fixed and we can uh, get all of our lovely screenshots back. All right, let's see if they'll uh, spawn or scale to level 100. Let's go in here. Let's test this out. Level 75. Okay. The game is, you know, throwing egg on my face saying, Pineapple, you're lying. They don't scale to level 100. They always scale to 60. I say, actually, yeah, no, I'm wrong. The way that this actually works and what I've, I've actually found is that when you clear out West Tech, all right, so when you go around to your, do your rounds here, why is he not getting killed? Oh, the, oh, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> bit of a delay there on the server. Okay. Um, but when you clear out West Tech in the interior, uh, you can go downstairs. There's a little elevator around uh, near the bottom of West Tech or one of the other rooms here in West Tech. You go downstairs, take the elevator down to the FEV production facility or the basement, as I just like to call it. And essentially, when you come back up after clearing the Super Mutants down there, you will then have Super Mutants spawn to level 100. All right, here's a legendary level 100. There we go. 764. Ah, we don't care about the legendary. We're on custom worlds. We can craft as many legendaries as we want to, but there we go. Pretty much making quick work of all of these Super Mutants. Let's go over here and see if there's any more. Any more Super Mutants? Level 60. Boom. There we go. There we go. Yeah, so pretty much it speaks for itself. It's an absolute god tier weapon. I mean, making quick work of Scorch Beasts, Myler Queens. We tested this out on the Super Mutant Behemoth. We're doing this on Super Mutants. Um, any more in here? Any more? There usually should be a few more in here. Where's the Doge? Where's the Doge? Doge! There you go. Alrighty. 329. Level 60. Yeah, pretty much. But as, as we can see there, we did manage to get a few level 100 super mutants. It makes quick work of them. Oh, you just spawned out of nowhere. <laughs> Where'd he come from? <laughs> level 60. Alrighty, alrighty. So I think that pretty much wraps it up. I think that kind of speaks for itself. If there's any other enemies that you ever want me to try this out on, you know, please do let me know in the comments. You know, we can even test it out against the Scorch Beast Queen. We can do a Scorched Earth. We can do something like that, even an Earl. All that kind of good stuff. We'll, we'll make sure to do that in future videos. But yeah, folks, let's do it. So we've pretty much proved the purpose of the bloody 2525. And as you can see here, let me have a quick look. Yeah, we have that there at about 193. And that will obviously increase with the more rads and stuff that we have, depending on how, uh, how radiated you are and all that kind of good stuff. Alrighty, so let us get to the outro of this video and let's wrap this up. Let's do it. Let's go. And there you have it, folks. That's an in-depth look into the bloody 2525 fixer. Hopefully someday soon, if you're a bloody build and if the RNG gods of Fallout are generous enough, hopefully you'll be able to land yourself the same roles, or even if you're lucky enough, hopefully you'll be able to find a friend willing to trade with you for one. And if you liked this video and found it beneficial, consider hitting the subscribe button for more Fallout 76 weapon spotlight videos in the future. I've now moved to streaming three days a week over on Twitch so that I can focus more on putting out Fallout content over here on YouTube. So if you want to see my schedule for when I go live and want to see this weapon and other weapons like this in action, or even just want to hang out with some of the Fallout community, I'll leave a link to my Twitch in the description below. If you want to connect with more people who play Fallout 76 and want to join our community, you can join my Discord server, which I'll leave in a link in the description below. If you like the work I produce and want to support me in a more personal way, you can now subscribe to me on Patreon. Patreon members will get a host of benefits such as access to Patreon-only channels in my Discord server, where you can connect with other Patreon members and much more. I want to also say a massive thank you to all of my followers over on Twitch and here on YouTube, as it means the world to me that you enjoy my content and the work that I produce. And lastly, to you, the viewer, the person who stumbled upon this video, thank you for being here. I hope you enjoyed. Until next time, Vault Dwellers, stay safe out there in the wasteland, and I'll catch you all in the next video.